everybody. Welcome to class today. I wanted to go ahead and get this up on the board so you could see exactly what we're going to be working on. Get this written down in your sketchbooks, please, and we will take attendance, get things started, and go from there. You can look at this pretty slide while we're working on attendance and such. Do you recognize anyone? Do you see similarities in the different pictures, paintings? and a little fun. All right, so back to our agenda. Uh, today we will define, discuss Impressionism and the rise of pointillism during the post-Impressionism period in France. You, as my lovely students, will actively participate in class in order to demonstrate and explain your understanding of the science of optical blending through the creation of a color wheel. So let's get ourselves started. What do you guys know already? using the images from the first slide of this presentation, so really the one with all the paintings. Name an artist featured from either Impressionism or Post-Impressionism. Name some things that you see in common among those paintings, and what is that science I'm talking about? Let's see if any of you guys got some of these artists right. I know there were a couple pieces in here who were recognizable. Um, if at the very least there was one I would think you guys would know. So the names are Seurat, Van Gogh, Signat, Pizarro, Luce, and Cezanne. They are the main players I feel in Impressionism and Post-Impressionism in France. Pizarro is actually a woman. There were very few women in most of art back at the time. So George Seurat, some say they see poetry in my paintings. I only see science. He really wanted a very structured way to go with his painting. So let's start with Impressionism first. We're in France, 1860s. The Salon is in full force. Monet, Manet, Rodin, and Degas are the big players in this case. They chose to get a quick glimpse or an impression of the scene. They did a lot of their painting en plein air, which is outside. Um, Claude Monet was kind of the outlier of the group. He wanted to use a technique that kind of just dabbed the paint on the canvas. And then instead of mixing on the canvas or on the palette, he lent it to you and your eyes to see the colors mix when you stepped back and you were at a distance from the painting. Then we have post-impressionism, and this is really what pointillism grew out of. Uh, we're about 20 years later. The artists involved in this Period wanted something more. They wanted more than just that quick impression. Um, so Seurat, Van Gogh, Cezanne, and Gauguin uh, kind of created something different for themselves, something that spent a little more time. Often they still would start painting out in the open, um, but then take their pieces back into the studio and continue at that point. George Seurat was really the lead in this movement. He and Paul Cezanne split from the others, uh, wanting something more scientific, whereas Van Gogh and Gauguin wanted something a bit more emotional in their paintings. Now, what else in the world was going on? Take a moment with that same group, gather your table mates, brainstorm, Google five things that were going on in the world at that time. What kind of things can you find might have led these artists to 
feel the need to be different. You feel the need to break from the expected, the typical classical look of paintings prior to Impressionism. So here we have some of the main things that I found were going on. And that top one is a big deal. In the States, we had President Lincoln and Gettysburg going on, and we had Queen Victoria in England. Uh, the Suez Canal was opening up. Um, but the top three are really our biggest deal. Uh, what family would you say that those things would be gathered together in? So what family? Technology, right. Technology was evolving and the light bulb, the telephone, the camera, everything was becoming so much more popular and so much more user friendly, I guess, for the time. And the camera was something they were going to have to compete with. So artists had to evolve too. And this was the last period in the history of art, really, where art was as it had been before. Artists now had that permission. They had that permission to be something different, make something different than what the camera was going to be able to give the client. Where can you think you guys see that still happening in our world? Pointillism still being used in our modern world. Anybody have a CRT monitor still? I know they're pretty old, but even a television, old television screens, get up close and you can see all the small dots that from far away form the pictures you see. Offset printing is very common. You get that moire pattern that you'll see again actually in my example of our color wheel. And then modern artists, a lot of modern artists still use their own interpretation of pointillism. So what I wanna go ahead now and do is let's partner up. Pick somebody to your right, to your left. Let's partner up. Go ahead and visit Creative Block. You know, check out, find a artist that you like, a modern artist, a school appropriate artist, that you can choose a photo and load it onto Yo Teach and let us know, let the class know what it is that you liked about this, that you were drawn to about this particular artist and their interpretation of pointillism. There's your QR codes. Go ahead and scan those with your phone and get yourselves together. Yay, activity time. All right, so we're gonna be making color wheel. <clears throat> we're gonna use the pointillism technique with stippling small dots. You can only use red, yellow, and blue, our primary colors. You can only use those colors and you must create your secondary colors. You can use any medium you have available. You'll see that I did mine with Adobe Illustrator. Turn in your color wheel when it's complete or no later than three class periods. You'll also need to take a photo of your color wheel and load it into the sample slide coming up so that we can kind of see how, how everyone opted to go about this and see how successful our various mediums were. If you are using a digital medium, you can see my directions here about how to handle that slide and everyone will turn in their slides via Google Classroom. All right, this is my example. I have a quick video at the end of all this showing you how I created it. Um, again, I did it in Illustrator you, and this is your sample. So duplicate it, put your own file in there, send it back to me in Google Classroom. All right, you guys, so I wanted to give you a quick, um, I guess, tutorial, <laughs> very brief tutorial on how I went about creating my color wheel. I did it in Illustrator. I prefer digital format when it's something that I need to knock out pretty quickly. So what I did is I went ahead and started by drawing my color wheel completely, just like you see in the 
sample slide. Put together my, my grid of dots, and then I created a clipping mask. So I know that my middle one needs to be red. On the right, I'm going to have orange, and on the left, I'm going to have purple. So I repeated the same set of steps for yellow and blue. There's my yellow, there's my blue. So that is pretty quick how it went about. I used the same grid of dots. I just changed their color and changed where the mask was. This is your rubric. If you have any questions whatsoever, please let me know. Do not bury yourself before you ask me a question.